Good night, everyone. I am so excited to be speaking with you tonight on Vagabond Spirits. Listen, if you do me a big favor, begin to share this broadcast. Let somebody know that we're talking about Vagabond Spirits. We're going to break and we're going to dismantle the powers of darkness. We're going to ensure that everything that the Lord wants us to talk to uh, talk about tonight, that we're going to be faithful and good stewards as it relates to this topic. So listen, I'm excited. I cannot wait as I just get myself adjusted. I cannot wait to talk about this and unpack this um, dynamic um, topic to you because oftentimes a lot of people have vagabond spirits and they may not be able to identify it. They may not be able to, um, you know, put uh, the, the hammer on the head or, or to, to identify what exactly it is, but we're going to talk about it today. Listen, I want you to do me a big, big, big favor. If you're here and you're with me live, I want to say welcome. And if you're also watching the replay, I want to say welcome. Look, brace yourself, acknowledge yourself, say hello in the comments, princess. Hello. How are you? I want for you to begin to type out in the comments that you're here so I know. And look, guys, we got this is going to be dense. This is going to be heavy. This is going to be good. So begin to share this. Begin to cast your screen. Get comfortable. Um, if there's somebody that you know that could be a benefit, I want for you to be able to tell them to come on. Stephanie, hello. Welcome to this broadcast. I haven't seen this name before. So if you're new, welcome. Um, have something to write with. Um, I'm so I'm so excited. I want you to, uh, to like, to comment, to share. And as, as we're going on, I want you to stay with me. I want you to fill the comments comment sections up. And even for those on the replay, I want you to begin to fill the comment section up. I want for us to, to get the most out of this. Now, listen, as we're going throughout this evening, I want for you to be able to tag me, tag me on Instagram at my Instagram handle. If I say a quote that you like, if I say something that you enjoy, begin to tag me at me and I will repost you. We want to spread the word about vagabond spirit. So we're not going to delay. We're going to jump right on in. So let's begin. Father, tonight I'm asking that as we're about to talk about vagabond spirits, that you, oh God, will release ears to hear. In Jesus name we pray. Amen and amen. Now let's get down to business. I want to give a disclaimer before we begin. Okay. Now when we, we're talking about vagabond spirits and oftentimes a lot of religious people or a lot of uh, theologians will say, well, we don't have any accounts or we don't see anything in scripture that talks about a vagabond spirit. And so my disclaimer to you is that when we say a spirit, what we're doing is we're, we're literally acknowledging or we're, 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 we're explaining the characteristics behind um, an action or a motivating uh, theme. So in this case right now, we're talking about vagabond. So what that means is that we are going to be talking about the vagabond spirit or the characteristics of a vagabond. Now, another disclaimer is that just because you may not see the word verbatim vagabond spirit in the Bible does not mean that we can draw certain truths from it. Again, like I always say, the word Trinity is not in the Bible, but we've embraced that as one of our foundational beliefs. And there's a whole, a whole bunch of other things like the name of a youth pastor. We don't see that in scripture, but yet we've equated it today. Why? Because we're describing the role and we're describing the things of people. And so I just wanted to say that, okay? Now, another disclaimer, is before when we're going into this, I don't want anyone to look for people. I want you to look inwardly and say, am I a vagabond? Do I have vagabond tendencies? Before you point, they, they say whenever you point a finger, there's one finger that's pointed to the other and you have three that are pointing at you, which are these three. So I want you to begin to look inward tonight. I want you to be able to say, you know what? Um, I want to see if I have any vagabond tendencies. And listen, we all do. We all do. So don't get offended. Don't get upset. Don't get scared. Don't get angry. But we're going to talk about these things tonight. Now, in my opening statement, for those of you who are taking notes, I want for you to get ready and say, and I'm just going to say this as an opening statement. I'm seeing all my people here. Davin, hello, welcome. Anna, hello, welcome. As an opening statement, I want to say this. A vagabond is one who wanders in search for something that it has not yet identified. A vagabond is one who, who, who wanders in search for something it has not yet identified. See, this is very important that we talk about this and that we get down to it. A vagabond spirit at its, at its core, at its root, at its entirety, is one who wanders searching for something that it has not identified. Now, I want you to understand the logic here. Think about how this doesn't make sense. Usually when you're looking for something, you know what you're looking for. If you lose your cell phone, you're on a radical pursuit to find your cell phone. But you see, vagabonds don't have that logic. These demon powers push people into a hyper-seek or into a, into a search mode where they're looking for something that they do not know what they're looking for. And see, this is why it's so crazy because if, if you don't know what you're looking for, your search or your seek is in vain. 
Oh my God, today. And usually when you're looking for something, for example, if you lost a rag, common places that you're going to look for when you're, look, when you're talking about a rag is you'll probably look in the bathroom, you'll probably look in a bedroom, you'll probably look in a kitchen. Why? Because there's certain themes that are around what you're looking for. But when you can't identify exactly what you're looking for, you don't even know where to search for it. You don't even know what possible places could be options. And then things just get topsy-turvy and it's just too much. So I wanted to just say that a vagabond spirit is one who searched, wandering for something that it has not identified. Now, I want to give us some definitions of the word vagabond because this is what's going to really set the stage and this is what's really going to make it all make sense when we tie it in. Now, the Hebrew definition of the word vagabond, I'm going to try and take my time because I'm getting excited. The Hebrew word for the word vagabond means to shake, to waver, to move to and fro, to flutter, to wander or to flee. I'll say that again. The Hebrew definition of the word vagabond is it means to shake, to waver, to move to and fro, to flutter, to wander or to flee. Okay. Now the Greek definition of the word vagabond means to go about, to stroll, or to wander. Now, by this point, I'm sure that you're seeing the common themes here. Again, it means, the Greek, vagabond means to go about, to stroll, or to wander. My God in heaven. And Google, lastly, defines vagabond as a person who wanders from place to place without a home or a job and having no settled home. In other words, the old school church will say you have no abiding city. And so that Google defines a vagabond as one who wanders from place to place without a home or even a job. And it's, it, has, it has no settled place. It has no place where you can slap an address on it and say, this is where this person resides. This is where you can find this person, this, that, and the third. So I'm laying the foundation of, of describing what a vagabond is because I'm going to give you now a scriptural reference as to what a vagabond actually is. So I want to read from Genesis chapter 4 verses 1 to verse 16. It's a bit lengthy but we're going to read it because we need it for context and I'm going to be reading it in the NASB in the new um, in the New American Standard Bible okay in the NASB that's Genesis chapter 4 from verse 1 to verse 16 and we're going to look at a passage of scripture of a man who was possessed or who was motivated by the vagabond spirit and here's how this spirit came to birth how it came to fruition how it came out and now we see it manifesting in different men and women today. So here's how it reads. Now the man had relationships Relations with his wife Eve. Now they're talking about Adam, okay? Eve, and she conceived and gave birth to Cain. And she said, I have obtained a male child with the help of the Lord. And again, she gave birth to his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of flocks. In other words, he was a shepherd, but Cain was a cultivator of the ground. Okay, he was a harvester or a farmer, R rather, a tiller of the ground. So he was like an agricultural guy. Uh, till of the ground. Verse three. So it came about in the course of time that Cain brought an offering to the Lord from the fruit of the ground. Guys, don't miss this. Verse four. Abel on his part, uh, fruit on the ground. Abel on his part also brought an offering from the firstborn of his flock and from their fat portions. And the Lord had regard for Abel and his offering, but for Cain and his offering had no regard. In other words, he didn't esteem it as good. He didn't esteem as uh, he didn't esteem it the same way he did Abel's. Okay. Now we're we're moving on. Uh, he had no regard, so Cain became very angry, and his face was gloomy. This is getting good to me. This is getting good to me. Then the Lord said to Cain, "Why are you angry, and why is your face gloomy?" If you do well, will your face not be cheerful? And if you do not well, sin is lurking at the door and its desire is for you. But you must master it. Okay, but you must master it. Verse eight, Cain talked to his brother Abel. And it happened that when they were in the field, Cain rose up against his brother Abel and killed him. Guys, this is getting good. Verse nine, then the Lord said to Cain, where is Abel your brother? And Cain responded, I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? Verse 10. Then he said, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying out to me from the ground. Here's the key verse. Verse 11. Now 
this is God still speaking to, to Cain. Now you are cursed from the ground, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. Verse 12, when you cultivate the ground, it will no longer yield its strength to you. You will be a wanderer and a drifter on the earth. Okay, that word wanderer is another word for vagabond, which we literally just um, which we literally just broke down for you. If you read the King James Version, it says you will be a vagabond on the earth. OK, verse 13. Then Cain said to the Lord, my punishment is too great to endure. Behold, you have driven me this day from the face of the ground and I will be hidden from your face and I will be a wanderer, <clears throat> vagabond and a drifter on the earth. And whoever finds me will kill me. So the Lord said to him, therefore, whoever kills Cain, vengeance will be taken on him seven times as much. And the Lord placed a mark on Cain so that no one finding him would kill him. Verse 16 and last, as we say in the old, old school church. Then Cain left the presence of the Lord and settled in the land of Don, east of Eden. Now, that was a lot of reading, but all of it is going to be important. Now, I want you to understand something. We're looking at a contrast here between the, between the children of Adam and Eve. Okay, Cain and Abel were their names. Now, with Cain and Abel, Cain and Abel were brothers, and it came that they were. It was time for them to offer up worship to the Lord. So Abel, who was a shepherd, gave God the fattiest portions and the the best looking sheep that he had to offer. But Cain just grabbed, just found a few pumpkins and a few, you know, uh, yams and a few potatoes, and just said, you know what? It was last minute, and he was let me just throw it together and give it to God. When Cain saw the way that the Lord regarded Abel's gift, Cain got angry and he got jealous, and as a result of it. Um, he ended up killing his brother. Now, I want you to understand something about vagabond spirits. Vagabond spirits usually always come about whenever one is not secure in their identity. Now, you see, Cain was presented with, in, with a few options. Cain could have said, you know what? Let me learn from Abel and see what I could have done better for my offering to be received. But instead, no. Cain responded carnally and he ended up killing his brother Abel. And you see, th this is oftentimes what ends up happening is that we, we, we don't learn to be students, but it's that we always want to be on top. We always want to be the top dog. And so when we look at it, that the blood of his brother Abel was crying out to God from the earth. And so I want you to understand something. OK, it says that his face was gloomy. In other words, he was being all dramatic. He, he couldn't understand why his seed was why God didn't why God didn't receive his offering. And so it said that he rose up and he killed them. And then when God tried to ask him, about it, Cain had the audacity to catch an attitude, saying, Why, how should I know where he is? Am I my brother's keeper? But when you look at it, what ended up happening is God ended up cursing um, Cain because he killed his brother in a pursuit of wanting to please God. So I want you to understand something. So God said that, you know what? Because you did this thing, I'm literally going to make your job here on earth. It's always going to be hard. No matter whatever you plant, the earth will never yield its strength to you. Oh, this is getting good. And what did the Lord says? It says, you will be a wanderer and a drifter from the earth. Now, I want you to understand something. If you read a few chapters before, this is supposed to be in the Garden of Eden. This was the place that God gave them to live. But then Cain ended up being a vagabond. And in other words, he had no abiding city. He ha he wandered from place to place. He couldn't find any refuge for his soul. Why? Because that's the curse that ended up that 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 God put on him for as a result of his murder to Abel. Okay, as a result of his murder to Abel. And so when you look at it now, vagabond, and all of a sudden now, you know, Abel, um, Cain is acting the victim. Oh my God. Oh, this my punishment is too much for me. This, that, and the third. When in reality, Cain could have responded a lot better, but because he responded negatively when it came to giving giving an offering to God, what happened is that God ended up putting a curse on 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 Cain. And as a result of that curse, there was an uneasiness. This is getting good. There was an uneasiness that was. In Cain's soul. So Cain could, anytime he would try to start, in hypothetically, I'm thinking, anytime he would try to pitch a tent somewhere and, you know, create, create a house and, you know, start farming and start doing, I believe there'd be an agitation in his spirit to say, that, you know what, something would torment him where he'd have to just wander and walk the streets and not having any place where he can call home. Oh God, today, this is getting good to me. This is getting good to me. So when you look at it now, this is how the vagabond spirit first and foremost, came about. It came about 
through murder, through killing, through envy, through jealousy. This vagabond spirit before it had a gloomy countenance. Why? Because it was seeking validation from the Lord and it, and it came about through rejection. So because God rejected Cain's offering, as a result, a vagabond spirit entered into him as a result of the rejection that he wanted. He wanted to be esteemed or he wanted his gift and his offering to be esteemed the same way that God esteemed Abel's gift. So when we're talking about vagabonds, I want to break down the characteristics of a vagabond spirit. Okay, and I want you to make these. It's going to be in, in bullet points, okay? So I'm just giving you the origin of how vagabond spirits came about. So vagabond spirits or people who are possessed with the vagabond spirit or people who have vagabond tendencies are always at least, I don't know how much I have here, but 95% of this list. So vagabond spirits manifest itself through indecisiveness and double-mindedness indecisiveness and double-mindedness how do i know that because james talks about james chapter one it says a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways so in other words i remember i gave you the definition of vagabond so vagabond means to wander it means to flutter it means to move to and fro so when you think about it it says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways the word waver unstable and waver are the same words my god that word flutter it means to shake. So that, that's really what double-mindedness is because when James was talking to the church in James chapter one, he says that, you know, that, that a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. It says that, you know, and because what? It's rocky. It doesn't know what it wants. So one minute it wants something, another minute it wants nothing. Why? Because it's a double-minded spirit. And so vagabond spirits are always indecisive and double-minded. They'll never know what they want to do. They'll never know what career path to take. They'll never know if they want to get married. One minute they want to get married. Another minute they don't want to get married. They, they, they're literally indecisive about everything. They can never give you a sure and a concrete answer. Secondly, vagabond spirits are non-submissive and dishonorable. They're non-submissive and they're dishonorable. And here's why. A vagabond doesn't have any reason to submit. Why? Because a vagabond is one who searches and jumps from place to place and moves to and fro. Now, in a normal, regular family, what ends up happening is anybody who is a son or who is a daughter, that means that you have parents who is going to take care of you. This is getting good to me. So uh, the Bible says that a good um that 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 a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. Now, an inheritance is something that is laid up for the children on the grandchildren of a founding father or founding mother. Oh, God today. So if you're a vagabond, that means that you're going to end up leaving the house early and forfeiting and turning your back on your family. And so you're forfeiting your right to having an inheritance. So how does this make them dishonorable and non-submissive? They don't submit to anything or anyone because they have no inheritance to look forward to. My God today. That is good to me. A vagabond spirit is non-submissive and dishonorable because it does not have an inheritance that it needs to claim. So I'm not going to waste my time being respectful. I'm not going to waste my time here trying to do this, that, and the third because at the end of the day, it's not going to benefit me because I do not have an inheritance with them. That's good. Vagabond spirits are also opportunistic and they're gamblers. A vagabond will do whatever it takes to seize an opportunity just for survival's sake. Again, we have to look at the contrast because a vagabond and an orphan are almost parallel. Orphans are people who, who, whose, whose parents have, 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 have abandoned them or have neglected them willfully or even unwillfully. So a vagabond spirit as well is opportunistic because it's going to do what it needs to do to survive to get to the other day. A vagabond spirit is selfish, number one, and self-seeking, number two. A vagabond spirit is only looking about itself, how it's going to get to get to the next day. It, it will do whatever. It only thinks about me, myself, and I. A vagabond spirit is on a radical pursuit to stay alive. A vagabond spirit is tormented for their safety. A vagabond spirit is is tormented because it it may not have the the support and the help and the and the, the the godly desire that it needs to be able to be confident and to find a place of rest. Look, guys, if this is blessing you, tag me on Instagram, boomerang me, do whatever you got to do. Tag me with your favorite quote because I'd love to repost you and I'd love to spread the word. All right. Also, a vagabond spirit is one who is unplanted. And one who is never rooted. 
Now, so what I mean by one who's unplanted or, or not, one who's not rooted, think about this. When you have a plant, whenever you have a plant, the only way that a plant can come forth is if, it's, if, is if it has roots in a soil. If it has roots in soil, a flower pot, in the earth, in the ground, whatever. So a vagabond spirit is one who's not planted because vagabonds don't stay at one place long enough for its root for its for for its um for its roots to take root. Essentially, for its roots to take root. It doesn't stay in one place for 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 for, for its roots to go down deep into the earth or go down deep into the flower pot so that it can begin to grow. So a vagabond is always unplanted. A vagabond always cuts its path short. A vagabond doesn't allow the roots to take down into the soil so that nutrients can go to the leaves so that it can grow nice and strong. Vagabonds are always never rooted. They are always never planted. Why? Because it doesn't give itself enough time to actually be planted to receive the nutrients that it needs. This is getting so good to me. Let me even go further. When you talk about um, talk about a plant or a tree, you, Jesus says what? By their fruit, you shall know them. So what that means is, is you when you look at the fruit of a tree, you, you can say, oh, this is an orange tree. Why? Because the tree is giving off oranges. This is an apple tree. This is a pear tree. This, that, and the third. So when a, a, an, a, a vagabond is, is, not, is not rooted, in other words, they're untraceable. So if they're untraceable, this means that we can't track their genealogies. We don't know who your parents are. We don't know who your, your spiritual parents are. We don't know who your friends are. You're untraceable. Why? Because you're not connected to any amount of soil. You're not connected. You're not rooted and grounded into anything. Why? Because vagabond spirits jump from flower pots to flower pots, relationships to relationships, churches to churches, alignments to alignments, friend groups to friend groups. Why? Because it does not allow itself to take root and also because it's untraceable guys i can't make this up vagabond spirits are truce breakers and a true and what true what, what, what a truce breaker is is one who does not value the power of a promise a truce breaker is one who is a covenant breaker so a vagabond spirit will tell you look i'm gonna be with you to the end but guess what just because a vagabond spirit will spew out these lies that doesn't mean that it's obligated to keep it why because a vagabond is willing to do whatever it needs to do to survive to get to the next day a vagabond spirit are, are, are people who are always truth breakers. They're covenant breakers. They break their promises. They are not promise keepers. A vagabond spirit is a truth breaking spirit. And they will say whatever it needs to say to get whatever it wants to get. A vagabond spirit will do whatever it needs to do to receive whatever it wants to receive. A vagabond spirit will it will pledge us its loyalties and its alliances to everything and everyone. And then it will, do, it will put so much obligation on itself that it forgets who it made a commitment to. And as a result of it... There's people who've been broken and hurt in the process. Have you ever wondered why your father couldn't stay in the house for too long? Have you ever wondered why daddy would come around and all of a, then all of a sudden he'll go away and find another woman? You ever wondered why some friend groups only talk to you for a season? They only use you for what they can have and then they move on to the next group of people. They want people to pity them, this, that. No, that is a covenant breaking spirit. Characteristics of a vagabond spirit. They are, so what the Bible calls them, I'm going to say that they have, they don't have natural natural affection. So the, the King James Version, it says that without ordinate affection. And so what without ordinate affection means, it means that they're cold blooded towards family, towards covenant, and towards friends. So in other words, when you lack ordinate affection, which is a whole teaching in and of itself, which I probably need to do one day, vagabond spirits are cold blooded towards people that it's, connected to through covenant or through blood. Look at how Cain was able to slaughter his brother. That is not a normal thing for you to rise up and kill your blood brother. My God in heaven. Cain literally was selfish. Jesus have mercy. I'm not even ready to preach this thing. Okay, I'm giving, I have two more ca characteristics. Um, vagabond spirits are also self-sabotaging. So what a self-sabotaging person do is they start fires, they act messy, they plant seeds of discord, and they do nothing to try to fix it. Why? Because a vagabond will actually create issues and create havoc and create all these problems, and then it will use the doorways that it created to finally leave as an excuse that's justifiable to leave because things are weird. My God, you know those 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 groups or, the, or even we look we can see this stuff romantically. People who end up breaking up for things, they start fights in a relationship and they break up and then they move to another person and they start fights in that relationship and they break. No, this is what this is a, this is a characteristic of a vagabond. 
And lastly, a vagabond is one who are, vagabonds are always victims and they're always self pitying. Vagabonds are, oh, oh, look at look at what's happening to me. Nobody loves me. Wow. How can you do this to me? How can you say that to me? Oh, everything in my life is terrible. I'm not able to do this and the third. Everything is why me? Some pity party, this and the third. Vagabond spirits are victims. They are they, they like to throw pity parties for themselves. Why? Because it, it, it causes the people, and it causes new people that they come in contact with, it, it causes them to, to, uh, to initiate emotions of sympathy and empathy and it wants to be patronized and baby so that it can essentially use that person for whatever it needs until it starts a fire and breaches whatever it had with them to go to the next best thing a vagabond spirit is a using spirit it will use you it will say whatever it needs to say do it will do whatever it needs to whatever needs to be done whatever you need got it i'm gonna simply use you to get to what i need for the next day and then the and if i can't come out of it i'll start a problem and i will leave literally all these things that i just explained is what cain manifested Cain manifested these things. Cain, he, he's now untraceable. He's now a wanderer. He's now a drifter. He's tossed to and fro. Okay? So let's move on. I want to teach you now or, or, or unpack some ways that vagabonds will manifest itself in people. I just gave you the characteristics, but I want to tell you some ways about how a vagabond will manifest itself. Okay? So vagabond spirits manifest themselves through church hopping. Okay? 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 Okay, one minute God told you to go to this church down the road. Now all of a sudden something happened and then all of a sudden God changed his mind and said that in the next two weeks you're supposed to go to this church. And then you spend two weeks there and then a few months later God says to go to this church. That's a vagabond spirit. Because And again, that the, the motive of that church hopper, what were you in it for? Were you looking for uh, a title? Were you looking for a position? Were you looking for uh, sympathy, love, something that you wanted that you maybe didn't get? Vagabonds manifest themselves through church hopping. They're not submit. One minute God told you to submit to this man or woman of God. Now a few weeks later, he told you to submit to another woman of God. And now all of a sudden, oh, now you got a mentor over here. And then now you got three mentors over there. And then three life coaches and this, that, and the third. Guys, vagabond spirits manifest themselves in church hopping. They wander from church to church, fluttering and wavering indecisive without any place. And again, this is true because what? You're not traceable. Typically people ask you, what church do you go to? Bam, what they're trying to do is they're trying to identify the root of what you're connected to. My God today. They're trying to identify the root of what you're connected to. Help me, Holy Ghost. Let's move on. Vagabond spirits also manifest themselves in religion hopping. You know those fickle Christians who one day they're a major and now they're Muslim and now they're Buddhist and now they're they're Hindu and now they're just skipping through all, oh I got a fresh revelation I'm now a Hebrew Israelite and this when we look at these are vagabond spirits why because again literally as Paul said he said I don't want you to be ignorant and he said in Ephesians four he gave the fivefold to release raise up the kingdom uh, to to do the work of the ministry and then a few verses after it says so that you guys can be mature so that you're not tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. Now, guess what? That word to and fro is another word that 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 vagabond spirits is defined. Oh my God. The Hebrew defines vagabond. Let me read it for you one more time. Means to shake, waver, or move to and fro. So Paul didn't want us to be vagabonds moving to and fro with every wind of doctrine. Everything now, just somebody, not, not your teaching is skewed. Now, this is what Paul had to defend. He says, who bewitched you, O foolish Galatians? Anybody that comes preaching a Jesus that I did not preach, let them be accursed. Why? Because they were picking up different doctrines. They were moving with every different doctrine. The prosperity doctrine, the, the name it and claim it doctrine, this, that, and the, all these different doctrines. We need to be rooted and grounded vagabonds manifest themselves through religion hopping guys i can't make this up vagabonds also manifest themselves through unstable theology unstable theology and again this goes back as well every wind of doctrine one minute now, oh, you, I'm Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Oh, now I'm Jesus, Jesus only. Oh, now I'm Sabbath keeping. Oh, well, well now I'm Sunday worshiper. Oh, well, well now, I'm, now I'm this. Now I'm the, Guys, you need to be, we need to have a, a solid foundation. And a whole church is split. 
Simply because somebody believes you should worship on Saturday, people believe you should worship on Sunday. Some people believe you should eat pork. Some people believe you should. Some think you should wear hats. Some think you. Some people think you should wear skirts. Some people think you should have your ear pierced. Well, guys, guys, let's move on to perfection. Let's move on to perfection. Vagabond spirits also manifest themselves in job hopping. My God, today. So you get a job one week. Oh, I didn't like it. I'm going to find another job. Indeed.com, you go finding another job. Then you jump from one job to the next. Oh, it just wasn't working out. I didn't like the manager. I didn't like the work. Vagabond spirits are unstable. They're fluttering. They're moving. They're tossed to and fro. One minute you want to be in retail. Now you want to be in customer service. Now you're an architect. Now you're an engineer. Now you're a lawyer. Now you're a doctor. Vagabond spirits are uncertain. They're indecisive. They're double-minded in all their ways. Oh, God, today. Vagabond spirits manifest themselves through avoiding commitments and contracts. Now, a commitment is a verbal agreement. A covenant is a verbal agreement. So is a pact and so is a, and so is a promise and a vow. These are all things. That's why vagabond spirits don't want to get married. They don't want to commit to getting a phone plan. It's, it can be as simple as getting a phone plan, a two-year contract. Um, it, can be, it, it can be down to anything. Vagabond spirits shy away from commitment. That's why that's why the father of that mother, the, the father of that child doesn't want to marry that woman of God. Why? Because I don't want to be tied down. I'm not ready to settle down yet. Well, let's look at the word settle. According to Google, sorry, let's look at the word vagabond, how Google defines it. A person who wanders from place to place without a home or a job, having no settled home. So all the men of God out there who don't want to settle down, you might have a vagabond spirit. I didn't make this up. I just read you the definition of what vagabond meant according to Google. So if you have settling issues, if you just want to run the streets and just sleep and walk and sleep with everything that walks, that might be a vagabond, bro. Every woman of God who is not ready yet to commit herself to one man, she's just going to talk to this guy over here, talk to this guy, double dipping her carrots in everybody's ranch sauce. No, that's not how it works. You need to begin to settle down. If, and if you're afraid of commitment, if you're afraid of any type of contract or anything that's binding you to somebody through covenant or through words, might be a vagabond. Vagabond spirits manifest themselves through jumping from relationship to relationship without healing. The key word, the key word here is without healing. Vagabond spirits literally do not. You guys are funny. <laughs> Ranch sauce. That's good, eh? <laughs> Vagabond spirits literally do not take the time to heal after a, after a breakup. Why? Because it's un, it's searching for something that it does not know what it's looking for. So a vagabond spirit will say, well, I need a relationship to tell me who I am. My identity is found up in my job. So if I just lost my job, I need to get another job so that I can brag and say I'm a chiropractor, I'm a psychiatrist, I'm a doctor, I'm a vet, whatever. So vagabond spirits, literally, what they do is they, they jump from relationship to relationship without healing. And the, the the what the issue is is that again this is not a romance teaching but just for just for the sake of it just to give just to entertain it is that when you don't heal you're bringing all your baggage from your last relationship into your new relationship now you're stressing out the woman of God stressing out the man of God because you have all this past hurt past pain past trauma that you have not dealt with but all you want to do is say that you're in a relationship so that you can feel some type of security until you realize that your security is not found in any man or woman but it's found in how well and how knowledgeable you are of your identity as a son or a daughter of God. Vagabond spirits manifest themselves through indecision, not knowing where they want and not knowing where they're headed in life. Now, I want to make a disclaimer. You're not always going to know what you want to do. I don't expect a 16-year-old to know what he, where he or she is going to want to do for the rest of their lives. I'm not expecting, you know, somebody who's in who's in elementary school to know what they want to do. When I, was a, when I was a little boy, I wanted to be a cop. I wanted to be a firefighter. I wanted to be a preacher. I wanted to be a bank manager. I wanted, I wanted to be so many different things. 
So you don't always have to know, but it, it becomes problematic now when you're when you're finishing high school, when you're 17 and 18 and you still have no clue, when you're 20, 21, 22, 23, 25, then we need to begin to have a conversation because last week you were a woodworker. Now you're telling me you're now an HR specialist and tomorrow you're going to tell me that you're in IT. When you're a 30-year-old with fa with a family and kids, but you still don't know what you want to do academically. You still don't know what you still don't know what you want to do for your career. Something's not adding up. Might be a vagabond spirit. So, vagabonds literally are what what about the driving motivation? Or you'll know that vagabond spirits are 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 in operation. Vagabonds are basically an unsanctified seek. Ooh, that's good to me. Would you type that in the comments? Say a vagabond is an unsanctified seek. S e e e s e e k. An unsanctified seek. Vagabonds go searching. They go wandering. They go looking for. They're on a conquest and a journey for something that it has not identified. A vagabond would literally run in circles, looking for security, looking for prestige, looking for comfort, looking for love. But the thing is about the vagabond spirit, the vagabond spirit doesn't know what it's looking for. As I mentioned in the beginning, if you don't know what you're looking for, you won't even begin to know where to look. My God, today. A vagabond spirit thinks that its, that it's securities is found in nouns. A noun is a person, place, or a thing. Vagabonds think that their security or their identity is found in a noun, in a, either a person, either a place, or a thing. This is so good to me. Now, again, I want now, I, I want to make something clear, though. I want to make this something clear. There's a difference between having vagabond tendencies and being full blown, outright possessed by a vagabond spirit. Because again, your everybody's life is not all together. You know, some compartments you might know where you're going, but, you know, so you might say, I know I want to be married. I know I want to have kids. I know I want to, um, you know, I know what I want to do for my job, but I don't know what I want to do for school. So, again, if you have a few tendencies, if you're uncertain in, in, in some areas, that doesn't full blown make you possessed by a vagabond spirit. But it does mean that there's an area that you're unsure about. And let me tell you something this. Even if you're unsure about an area, it doesn't mean it's bad. It just means that you need the, the voice of God. You need the wisdom, the strategy, the, um, the self-discovery to figure out what you want to do. So I'm not saying that like, if, you're, if you're unsure about anything, then you're possessed and you need deliverance. But some things are not even demonic um, possession or oppression. Some things is just literally lack of knowledge, lack of confidence, this, that, and the third. So again, I want to make that distinction that there is a difference between having tendencies of a vagabond, but, um, but you'll know that you have a vagabond spirit when these cycles are constantly happening and Every day it's the same thing or over the over the span of a couple months, everything keeps happening this, just the same. Okay? Now, vagabonds, they don't know where they belong. Oh god. So if you if you ever get into a space, no matter what group of people, no matter what group of friends, and you're just like, I just don't feel like I fit in. I just feel like, you know, I feel so out of place. Vagabond spirit, sometimes. So what what the enemy will say is. Oh, no, no, no. You're just different from everybody else's. You know, you're they're the weird one. You're normal. You might be deceived by a vagabond spirit. If you always feel out of place, regardless of how loving people are, regardless of how genuine people are, regardless if God set them in your life, it could be that vagabond spirit trying to poke you in your behind saying, no, get up, find a new group of friends. You spent two months here and you can't camp out here. You need to cut them off, start a fight, steal their clothes and don't return it, vanish, block them on social media, just leave and run away it could be a vagabond spirit trying to tell you that you're just different when in reality you might be possessed it is not normal for you to jump from relationship to relationship friend group to friend group job to job church to church leader to leader spouse to spouse it's not normal it's not my god Vagabond spirits don't know where they belong. And the best part, too, is even onlookers don't know where a vagabond belongs. So, again, this reminds me of what happened when, when, when Peter betrayed Jesus. Peter, um, when Peter denied Jesus. Peter denied Jesus three times. Jesus told him he was going to do so he wasn't shocked. Now, 
Peter was so connected to Jesus that even though with his mouth, he said that I don't know this man, the way he spoke sounded like Jesus because he was in direct, um, he was in direct, uh, what's the word? Direct, direct uh, proximity or he was connected to, he had direct access to Jesus. So by his speech, that little girl said, Peter, your, your speech betrays you. So in other words, Peter was traceable. Why? Because Peter wasn't a vagabond. Peter, everybody knew that Peter was connected to Jesus. So when I say that, even onlookers know or don't know who, who you are based on who you're not connected to, that's an issue. My God, today. At any point, someone should say, oh, yeah, that person is John the Baptist's disciple. Why? They dress like John the Baptist. They talk like John the Baptist. They they they, they wear what John the Baptist wears. They speak what he speaks. They, they do what he does. Why? Why? Because when you're a vagabond, you don't have anybody that we, can, that, that we can look at and say, this person can hold them accountable. You think I can go ahead and start acting all crazy? My spiritual father is Apostle Ryan Lestrange. If I start doing some out-of-pocket left stuff, Le out of left field stuff, he's gonna come for me and say, "Look, this is not how we behave over here. This is not this is not my expectation of you. This is not what I expected." Why? People can look at me and say, "Oh, he's submitted to Apostle Ryan simply because I have planted myself under his care and under his ministry." A vagabond. If people can't say, "Oh, that's that's this person's friend." Oh, yeah, this person goes to this church. Oh, yeah, that's that's this person's wife. Yeah, that's this person's husband. You you might be a vagabond. You might be. You might be. Vagabond spirits, they do not have consistent patterns. Oh, God, this is so good to me. When you're a vagabond, you literally try and move and act stealthy. So that way people can't look at you and say, oh, yeah, you know, you, people are, you don't even give people the chance to get familiar to learn your rhythms. My God in heaven. My God in heaven. Okay. Let's move on. What are the consequences of vagabond? Uh, um, what are the consequences of vagabond behavior? So those people who are literally possessed, or people who have vagabond tendencies, they always experience one out of these three, at least one out of these three things, if not all three. One, one out of the three. Number one, vagabonds, their labor, their efforts, their aspirations, their dreams, and their goals, they never yield any fruit. I'm gonna drink to that. That's good to me. A vagabond spirit, regardless of whatever happens, whatever endeavor, whatever business they try to start, whatever program they endeavor to start, whatever ministry they try to plan, whatever job they try to endeavor, whatever friendship they want to pursue, it always never produces any fruit. It is unprofitable. Why? Simply because that is the curse of a vagabond. That's what the Lord told Cain, that the, the earth, that the, your job as a cultivator of the earth, whenever you try and yield, whenever you try and plant, it's not going to yield its strength to you. My God in heaven. And that's why vagabonds constantly search. So a vagabond is literally running and chasing its own tail because it's saying that I tried this and it didn't work, so let's try something else. I tried this and it didn't work, so let's try something else. I tried this and it didn't. And so it's just running in circles knowing that the vagabond simply needs to repent. The vagabond simply needs to acknowledge its tendencies and say, Lord, I don't want to be a vagabond anymore. And that's how you break the cycle. But a vagabond thinks that if I just move on and try to keep starting over, that things are going to work out. I digress. Consequences of vagabond behavior number two. A vagabond never feels accepted or never feels that they're in the right and proper place. These are the consequences. There is an agitation in your spirit to keep moving, to keep going, to disassociate, to never stop and actually plant and, and establish yourself in an area. My God in heaven. Vagabonds literally like they want that acceptance, but it's not in them to actually feel that acceptance. So it second guesses everything. It doubts everything. It, it, it thinks everybody's off and it, it has a chip on its back. What did, what did Jesus, the, God literally put a mark on Cain. My God, today. Preach this thing, man of God. I will. Lastly, consequences of vagabond behavior. The temptation to run. So vagabonds usually have the temptation to run or constantly Start over. You know those people that just want to say, you know what? I just want to get out, have a fresh start. I want to move to a new city. I want to move to a new school. I want to move to a new church. They always have this temptation and this nagging thing on the inside of them that constantly pushes them to constantly start over. 
These are the consequences. And we think that these things are like, oh, yeah, like, you know, I'm a trailblazer. You know, I'm just about the future. I'm all about progression. Could it be that you're deceived? You think you're all about progression, but could it be a vagabond spirit driving you to all these new game plans and, and you know, not finishing what you started? And, you know, you said that you were going to do this program at school, but now all of a sudden you're switching majors every two seconds. And now, you know, you're just, guys, it could be a vagabond spirit. It could be a vagabond spirit. Now, I want to touch one thing. It says that Cain was driven out of where he was living and he moved and transitioned to a place called Nod, N-O-D. The Hebrew word for that word Nod, it means a place of wandering. Oh, God. So not only did the curse of, of a vagabond come upon him, but instead what ended up happening was he ended up living in the habitation of wandering. Oh, my God. So that means that that's an actual location. But the good news is, is because if he now lives in where not is a place of wandering, that means you can also leave that place. So there is hope for the vagabond. But it leaves that person, as long as within the confines or that region of Nod, that it's always going to be constantly in a rat race, chasing its own tail, moving and operating in circles. My God, today. Okay, Stephen, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Now, the driver behind a vagabond behavior or behind vagabond tendencies and spirits are one, two, three, four. Four things that I'm going to identify. Number one, rejection. This is what drives a vagabond tendency. Number two, power. Woo! Can't wait to make this make sense. Number three, independence. And number four, security. These four things could be the driving force behind the vagabond spirit. Rejection, power, independence, and security. One more time. Rejection, power, independence, and security. Now, rejection. Cain felt rejected when God did not accept his offering, but accepted Abel's offering. So that is what pushed him into the hands of the vagabond spirit. My God, today. Have you ever noticed sometimes where people oftentimes, if they've they had a shot at love, and what ended up happening is they were in a good relationship, and then after it just broke off, suddenly the person left them with no explanation, with no reason, with no good judgment. That can force a vagabond spirit to enter into a young woman or a young man to keep searching for that love that it once had that rejected it. My God, today. You know those women that constantly have babies with, with many different men or those men that have babies with many different women? What they're doing is they're trying to establish a level of security through sexual encounter that if I give him a baby, it will make him stay. There's an old Jamaican song that says, Pitting in a whole man again. In other words, it means that babies don't make a man stay anymore. Now, the connotation of what they refer to as what makes a man stay is not very holy, which I won't say, but I just want to use that reference. Now, second driver. So number one is rejection. Number two, power or the, the, the desire for power is what pushes vagabond spirits to be in operation. Now, I want to I wanna reference a, a scripture here is, um, I don't know, I think it's Acts chapter 18, I think. But the story is, is the seven sons of Sceva. They were exorcist Jews. And the word says that if you read the KJB, it says vagabond Jews. My God, my God, my God, my God. They were literally vagabond Jews. And what they were doing is they were attempting to cast out demons in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preached. So in other words, they were trying to access kingdom revelation and kingdom power illegally without going through Jesus. Because these exorcist Jews or these vagabond Jews did not believe that Jesus Christ was Lord and that he was the Messiah. But they wanted to be esteemed as powerful the same way that people esteemed Paul as powerful. So they tried to cast out a demon in the name of Jesus whom Paul preached. Now, what did those vagabond Jews want? They wanted power. They wanted to be esteemed as powerful men. So that literally drove them and it drove them to, to, to a vagabond spirit entered into them because they were on a seek for power. So in other words, they were willing to do whatever was done to win the esteem of the people of that region, that they were powerful people, that they were worthy of praise. They were probably rejected, probably abandoned and had a whole bunch of daddy issues why they needed this 
to make them feel validated. They're probably jealous and envious of Paul. So they said, we're going to cast this demon out in the name of whom Paul, and guess what? They tried to cast it out and it didn't come out. Instead, that demon jumped on them, attacked them, ripped their clothes off, and drove them outside the city. Driver number three, what also drives a vagabond spirit? A wanting for independence. Guys, I can't make this up. Apostle, what are you talking about? I'd love to explain. Let's look at the prodigal son. The prodigal son had a father who was rich, who had a mansion, who had servants, a consistent meal. But what? The prodigal son wanted to receive his inheritance early. Now, the Bible doesn't say that he wanted independence, but it's pretty clear. He was younger than his older brother, but yet he demanded his father to give him his inheritance early because he wanted to live on his own. Oh, my God. So he was craving for independence. So I believe that that deep-seated desire for independence is what drove the vagabond spirit into the prodigal son and, and allowed him, he wanted to be independent, to maybe prove to himself, I don't know, to prove to his friends, to prove maybe he had friends who were, you know, not as rich as he was. He says, guys, I can be independent. Watch. I, I don't know what the storyline is. But a vagabond spirit entered into, into the prodigal son. And we, we know this because the vagabond was moving from place to place. He had to find a job. He was eating with the swines. He had no abiding city. He wasted all of his substance with prostitutes. So that shows me that through the prostitution, through those women or men, we don't know, that he was prostituting himself with, he was searching for something like a vagabond in those prostitutes. Uh, and it costed him all of his substance. Oh, God. Guys, I can't make this up. I really can't make this up. I'm not creative enough. I'm not, I can't make this up. Independence drove the prodigal son to have a vagabond spirit and vagabond tendencies. But you see, we need to learn from the vagabond, from the, from the prodigal son. The prodigal son repented and came back home. But most vagabonds don't do that. Why? Because their pride is too high to say, look, I'm tired of running. I'm tired of searching. I'm tired of eating nasty food. I'm tired of constantly not having my needs met. That's not the point. And lastly, the last driver point for, of a vagabond spirit is a search for security. The search for security. Now, my biblical reference is this. John chapter 5, the woman at the well. Man, she was looking for security. Now, when Jesus ministered to her at the well, Jesus gave her a word of knowledge and said, oh, you have, he's like, the man that you're currently living with is not your husband. Jesus knew that she had four or five husbands. What was that woman at the well? Why did she have so much husband? Why did she go through so much divorces? The woman at the well was clearly looking for her validation and for her security in a spouse. My God, today. In other words, vagabond spirits, they're looking for security in hopes to find refuge for the longing of whatever its soul wants. So if it wants to find security in a job for, for prestige sake, it will do whatever it takes. If it wants money, it will do whatever it takes. It's looking for security and, and to, to soothe that craving desire of its soul. This is so good to me. This is so good to me. So good to me. Now, I want you to understand something. It's natural for the human body or for, for us as human beings to have and to crave and to have desires. It's not a wrong thing for you to want to desire things, but it's the magnitude to which one is willing to go through to receive what it wants that a vagabond spirit can have its operations and its room in your life. So it's a good thing that you want to be married. But now it becomes problematic when you're jumping from man to man, girl to girl, and not committing or looking for your validation through that. Because you see, what a vagabond says is, I want to be a wife. I want to be a husband and I will not stop until. But the vagabond needs to understand that, no, 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 you're not a wife and you're not a husband. You are either a son or a daughter of the most high. A vagabond will say, well, I want a child. I want to be a mother. I want to be a father. But the vagabond needs to understand that before you're a mother or father, you are a son of the most high God. You are a daughter of the most high God. You are loved. You are validated. He accepts you before anybody else has and everybody else ever will. You see, vagabonds, it looks for security in nouns, person, places, or things. It, or even a thing could also be a role. My God today. So a vagabond will say, I'm not going to stop until my friends know that I have money too. So I'm going to get a job and do whatever. You're working all these shifts so you can ball out and prove to people for what? For what? So, we're almost done. 
I want to tell you now, here's what you need to do. If you have a vagabond spirit. So if you've heard this teaching and you said, you know what? This might be me. If you have a vagabond spirit, I'm going to give you six steps of what you need to do to overcome or how to evict and cast out the vagabond spirit. Now, a vagabond spirit, unfortunately, is not one that you can say in the name of Jesus, come out. Vagabonds are arrested and gripped in their mind. So you have to literally repent. To repent means to change the way you think and to change the way that you act. So when you change your mind and how you see yourself and when you get an identity shift, the vagabond tendencies fall off of you because you're now repenting. In other words, you're changing your mind to how, and your outlooks towards how you used to look. So what to do if you have a vagabond spirit? Number one, identify the areas that the vagabond spirit has been preying on you with. So again, identify the areas. Is the vagabond spirit running rampant in your romance life, in your academic life? Is it in your in your uh, career life? Is it in your uh, your your sexual life? Is it in your uh, church life? Is it in your uh, whatever your relationship life? Identify the areas that vagabond is preying on. Remember, because again, you have to identify what your soul, what your soul is searching for. What is your soul searching for? What is it that you're looking for? And now, once you identify what your soul is looking for, you can. So, which means number two, you need to identify the fear in those areas. Did you know that vagabond spirits constantly live in fear? Vagabond spirits constantly live in fear because it's it's afraid that it's going to miss out on the next opportunity. So, once you identify the areas. That, that it's been that's been rough that it's been in number two is you need to identify the fear in those areas what are you afraid of well I'm afraid that I won't get married well I'm afraid that I won't be that I won't be a licensed minister I'm afraid that I won't that I'll never get a chance to preach so I'm gonna leave this church and go to another God did not give you a spirit of fear so if fear is what's motivating your operations it could be a manifestation of a vagabond in your life well what if I never get married that's a fear that's a fear-based um, fear-based uh, endeavor. And God is not obligated to bless it. That's so good to me. That is so good to me. So number one, identify the areas. Number two, identify the fear in those areas. Number three, build your identity as a son and a daughter. The bottom line of your salvation, the bottom line of your security, the bottom line of your desire should be and the confidence that you have in your identity as a son or daughter of God. Number four, once you've identified your, that, that you are a son, that once you've identified yourself as a son or daughter, step number four, study the scriptures that teach on covenantal principles. A vagabond is a covenant breaker. So you need to be able to, to arm yourself with scriptures that teach you how to stay in covenant. All you have to do is do the opposite. My God, today. If you're used to running, apply yourself. Jesus, God, my God, my God. How do you want to be married one day, but you can't even work out a simple disagreement that you had with your boyfriend or your girlfriend? Vagabond will say, dump him and run to the next man that's better or the next girl that's better. My God. So step number four, study scriptures that teach on covenantal principles. Step number five, invite the divine Holy Ghost intervention into your life. Say, Lord, look, I've been a vagabond in this area all my life, and I'm asking you to intervene. I don't want to run. I don't want to wander. I don't want to be tossed to and fro. I don't want to flutter. I want to be constant. I want to have somewhere that I'm planted, somewhere that, that, somewhere that I'm rooted. Father, I don't want to do this. I'm asking you to intervene. Invite the Holy Ghost to intervene, because guess what? You can't do it on your own. It takes the Holy Ghost to combat demonic spirits. That's so good to me. And lastly, step number five, apply yourself to covenant relationships. If you have a tendency of jumping from job to job, say, you know what? I'm going to stay in this job for at least three years and see what happens. I'm going to try to I'm going to try and work this out with my boyfriend. I'm going to stay in this church until God tells me it's time until my assignment here is complete. Until I learn all I need to. You need to begin to apply yourself to covenant relationship. Now, vagabonds, hear me. That demon is going to keep tempting you to leave, to run, to block people, to ghost people, to go ghost and to go missing. But you need the Holy Ghost that's going to help you to endure to the end.
You need the fruit of the spirit to be able to endure. Vagabonds you to pull on the gifts, on the fruit rather, of endurance and long suffering. And also temperance, which means self-control. My God, today. That wasn't even in my notes, so that's free. Now, we're almost done. I want to tell you one more thing and then we're going to pray. Now, for those of you who have taught and have, who, who, who's here, you might have said, I know a few people who are vagabonds and who are close and in covenant with me. I want to teach you now how to deal with or to cope with vagabonds that are around you that you're in covenant with. So number one, identify who these vagabonds are. Pinpoint them. Is it a mom? Is it a brother? Is it a spouse? Is it a somebody that goes to the church? Is it somebody that at your job? Is it one of your friends or your new friends who may not know if we're going to last? Identify them. Number two, once you identify who these vagabonds are, guard your heart. Guard your heart. Now, understand me, okay? Uh, that you need to be able to protect your heart, especially if you're an empath and if you're a hard lover. You, you, you need to guard your heart because you don't want to get hurt by this vagabond. Okay, which brings me to my next step. Number three, now that you've guarded your heart, don't take their behaviors, their actions, or their manifestations personally. A vagabond spirit literally is only doing what it knows what to do. So when you guard your heart and you, you say, you know what, I'm not going to take them ghosting me personally. I'm not going to take them not answering my messages personally. I'm not going to take them leaving my club personally. I'm not going to take them leaving my church or my network personally. What you're doing is you're saying that it's not personal at you. It's something that the vagabond has to then identify in themselves and willingly want to overcome. But if you know somebody has a vagabond, what you need to do is say, I have a vagabond spirit. You need to guard your heart to say, you know what? Yes, I'm going to love them. I'm going to serve them. I'm not going to withhold, but I'm going to guard my heart so that in the event that I do get hurt, that I'm safe and that my emotions and everything is intact. Which brings me to my next point. So don't take it personally. Number four, love them, but don't become a doormat. My God, today. Love these individuals, but don't become a doormat. Don't fall for their guilt trip. Don't fall for their, their efforts to make you feel bad. Don't try and bend over backwards to please people who literally cannot be pleased. So we're commanded to love everybody like Jesus does. But a vagabond is literally wandering and searching. That's so good to me. And then the last step, number five. If you have a personal relationship with these people and they want to be better or if they're open and if they're ready with wisdom, discuss these tendencies with them, highlight it to them with wisdom and let them know that, hey, this is a habit that you have. You have to be wise, though, because not every vagabond wants to be confronted. If you confront a vagabond and tell them they're a vagabond, they're going to up and leave. They're just going to up and leave. Why? Because that's just what it's used to doing. People of God, we give you these teachings because I want you to be able not to be ignorant of Satan's devices. There are many people who God has assigned you to a certain church, to a certain leader, you know, to a certain field, to certain friend groups. And if you're not careful, what's going to end up happening is you're going to allow your vagabond tendencies to cause you to forfeit something that's supposed to bring you freedom, that's supposed to bring you deliverance, that's supposed to bring you healing, that's supposed to enhance your Christian experience, that's supposed to give you wealth, that's supposed to give you a loving family. Hear me and hear me well. Vagabond spirits are real. Demons, um, Christians can have demons. And it is my earnest desire that we all look inward and we say, you know what? I don't want to be a vagabond in any area. God wants us to be stable. He wants us to be like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water so that, so that we can receive nourishment and the refreshing that we need from the river. But if we're not planted by the river, we're not going to receive the nutrients necessary for us to grow and blossom to be the tree that God wants us. Let me even go further to say this john chapter 15 i am the i am the um i'm the branch and my father is the husband man i'm the vine and my father is the husband man we are connected to the branch so as believers some of us are spiritual vagabonds we say we're christians but we're not sucking from the vine we're not connected to the true vine my god why because the husband man or the dresser of the garden doesn't we're not even connected so that he can till us and snip us and make us look all nice and cut off the weeds and the thorns my god are you a spiritual vagabond 
Woo! You say you're a Christian, but yet you're you're untraceable. You don't look like Jesus. You don't smell like Jesus. You don't sound like Jesus. You don't demonstrate like Jesus. You don't love like Jesus. My God, today. Vagabond spirits are real, but so is the power of the Holy Ghost. If you are on here and you've received some revelation, says, I, look, I got some vagabond tendencies. I'm going to pray with you. So let's pray. Father, I thank you tonight for this supernatural, powerful teaching. God, I thank you that you are shedding light on the dark areas of our life. And we thank you, God, that it is your will that we become mature, no longer bathed, but that we will be built up, that we will be built up to the fullness and the stature of Christ. Father, we thank you that you are allowing your sons and daughters to repent, to repent from vagabond tendencies, Father. We decree and declare that from this point on, we will no longer wander, we will no longer stutter, we will no longer flutter, we will no longer be tossed to and fro, but we speak a sobriety and even a Holy Ghost anchor even now. We decree and declare that we will be anchored in the counsel of your will, that we, oh God, will be like the tree planted by the rivers of water. Father, we decree that we are that we are traceable. We decree, Lord God, that we are only wrapped up in you. Our identity is found in you. Our security is found in you, God. We can do nothing less, it's, it's, less is connected to you. So, Father, I'm asking you now that you will allow all vagabond tendencies, that you begin to break Lord God. I pray that the spirit of repentance will be released and that you would cause your sons and daughters to think differently Lord God. I pray that they would change the way that they see covenant. I pray God that you would allow a covenant um, keeping anointing to be released Lord God. Let people make covenants and agreements and commitments and stick to them Lord God. I pray for the Holy Ghost power to begin to convict and even to begin to strengthen those who want to turn and those who want clarity. Father for those who are simply unsure who do not know what they want to do in any endeavors. I'm asking you God, that you begin to release the curse, release the curse of wandering, release the curse of, of being a drifter and walking and living in Nod. Father, I pray that you would release your children from Nod and that you would allow them, oh God, to come into the land of decision. Let them know where they're headed, where they're going, what your will for their life is. And I'm praying, God, for every relationship that you strengthen it and that you allow the oil and the power of God to come in and through these covenants. I'm praying, God, for problem-solving skills. I'm praying for conflict re resolution skills. I'm I'm praying, Lord God, that for, for basic communication, to be able to communicate, to mend issues. Father, I bind that truth-breaking spirit, that spirit that doesn't keep covenant. I, Father, I break that spirit of without ordinate affection and I'm asking you, Lord God, that you'll allow people to be warm and to be loving towards the people that you're connecting them to. Lord, I'm asking you now that you put a stability in their heart. Stabilize them. Anchor them. Cause them to be rooted in you so that the fruit of their life and that the fruit of Jesus can come to manifestation. We thank you praise you, glorify you, and honor you. We say these things in the highest name of Jesus Christ we know. Amen and amen. People of God, I love you so much. Listen, share this teaching. Share this teaching. If you something I said blessed you, I want you to tag me on Instagram. At me, put up a story. Give me your favorite quote. We need to talk about vagabond spirits. And I'm so happy that many of you were set free tonight. And I'm so excited to see your relationships and your academics and your career and everything prosper. Jesus loves you. And I love you too. Until then, we'll talk another time. Catch you on the next live stream where we talk about some more topics. Subscribe, like, share, do what you got to do. If you want to give, if you want to be a blessing, you can sow. The information is down below of how you can sow and be a blessing to this ministry so we can keep serving you. Take care and God bless.